So quite often people will ask me what tools I have in my shop. These are the actual tools I use every day in my maker business. So what I thought it would be fun to do is show you the tools that I use and things you might want to consider uh, for your own shop. So let's get going. How's it going everybody? Steve here. Welcome back to my shop. Now I know it's been a slow start to the year, but uh, holidays and then I was sick for a couple weeks and I'm finally getting back to normal. Everything's backed up. But my shop, while it's in chaos, is still full of tools. So what I wanted to do is show you the things in this video that I actually use every single day. Now, I won't walk through and say, here's the pros and cons, here's why you wanna buy this versus something else. Uh, we'll save that for another video if people are interested. But what I just wanted to show you is, if you're starting a maker business, uh, you know, here are the things you might wanna use. So with that, let's get rolling and uh, we'll start with lasers. All right, I'm assuming you're just starting a, a maker business and uh, you wanna buy tools that are the most useful in the shortest period of time. So in this case, I'll start with a diode laser. Diode lasers are those blue lasers you've seen. They come in, in price ranges from at the low end about $250, at the high end close to $2,000. These are all US prices. And they are very good for cutting uh, most wood materials as well as engraving uh, similar materials but also you can engrave natively on stainless steel without any kind of treatment. Now what they're not good for is, is cutting or engraving especially things like clear acrylic which most people might want to do so it could be a big drawback for you if you want to make any kind of lighted sign but they are definitely the easiest way to get into a laser engraver and uh, certainly the cheapest, and uh, it, it's the one you might want to start with. In this particular case, it's the Xtool D1 Pro. It's a 20 watt, but power ranges from 5 watts now to 40 watts. Xtool announced a 40 watt laser now as well. So uh, lots of uh, products in this price range, and it, again, is probably the tool you, you're going to want to start with. All right, so moving over to the left in my shop, I have my Muse 3D which is a CO2 laser. Now CO2 lasers are generally a lot more expensive. Uh, you can get cheaper ones. You can get a K40, the famous Chinese laser. Uh, depending on who actually manufactured it, the parts may be pretty cheap. So you can get them as low as $400. Uh, they pretend to be 40 watt lasers, but usually they're about 30. By contrast, the Muse is a, a, about a 40 watt laser. I actually have a 45 watt tube in mine, but I don't think they, they push it to 45. Now, the, the characteristic of a CO2 laser, of course, is you've got a CO2 beam coming down through a beam path down to the material. And CO2 lasers are very good at cutting, I'll say in the case of a 40 watt, up to about uh, six millimeters or quarter of an inch of plywood. You have to work a little bit if it's if it's hardware store plywood, but you can do it. They will also engrave things like clear acrylic or glass without any kind of treatment. Now they won't engrave stainless steel without some kind of treatment, and but you can spray Surmark on uh, on the material, and it, it does a very nice job. So you may decide you want a CO2 laser. Uh, prices range from. Uh, in the case of this Muse 3D, it's about, I don't know, $8,000, I think. You can get cheaper ones. The high end of CO2 lasers for, uh, we'll say the conventional maker business would be something like a 120 watt uh, or 150 watt laser. Uh, those will set you back anywhere from ten to $40,000. Uh, if you have big budget, uh, go for it. Okay, so now I've moved over to the uh, opposite corner of my shop and to, this is my CNC area. So I have a Onefinity Woodworker. Uh, this is the original one, which does, uh, I believe it's 42 by 42 inches square. And the reason I got this one was because it used ball screws instead of belts. Also has big beefy uh, bars for, for running the any of the moving surfaces. Uh, now I have upgraded mine. I put an 80 millimeter uh, spindle on it, liquid cooled, of course. And uh, I've also got their dust boot, which works okay. Uh, and up to my vacuum system. Now the Onefinity also includes uh, the ability to use a standard gaming controller to control it, move it around. So 
X and Y and the Z axis. And of course, there's also a display where, where you can touch and control everything. You can do exactly the same thing though on a web browser from your local machine, which is typically how I use it. And uh, that's the CNC. Now you can certainly buy cheaper ones. Uh, if you look at online, uh, you'll see the, the 3018 model of CNC. Those things are all over Amazon. They're usually anywhere from 200 to $400. Uh, I personally wouldn't recommend one of those. Um, I have one and I basically uh, loaned it out and hopefully Ted, the guy who, who has it, doesn't hate me because it is a little more, much more tedious actually to use than, than a, a bigger commercial unit. Uh, but they're cheap and if you want, really want to just get trying something, maybe it's the way to go. Uh, this particular unit was around $2,000 plus probably about $300 to do the upgrade and uh, you can certainly spend a whole lot more or a whole lot less. So uh, like anything else, you buy what you can afford. All right, let's take a look at a, at a, a different tool. Uh, so far, uh, if you look at lasers and CNC machines, they tend to be what's called subtractive manufacturing, where you start with a big block of something and you chip away at it until it's the shape you want. 3D printers are additive manufacturing, where you start potentially with nothing, and you add on until you get something that you're looking for. The difference is a 3D printer can build something that is truly 3D, uh, which is a, a much more difficult on, a, on something like a laser. You really can't kind of carve a hole out on the side of something like you, like you can do with a 3D printer. So uh, definitely uh, there's advantages to having one. The disadvantage of a 3D printer is it's slow as a glacier. It's 3D printers take a long time to do a lot of things and uh, you know it's it's one of those things you might want to consider if you think you're going to build uh, high volume parts you're not it's just going to take too long now there are a couple of different kinds of 3D printers this is a familiar shape you've seen all over the place everywhere from the Prusa uh, MK3 to to certainly this longer LK4 uh, this is called the I T I3 framework where you have the whole x-axis including the stepper motor and the and the head moving up and down and and in the case of the x the side to side is the, the entire extruder moves side to side so it tends to be heavy now there's also another type which doesn't have this problem it, it has some different problems perhaps but but uh, that's a core xy printer where the stepper motor that, that moves the extruder is actually one half of a pair that moves, if, if only one motor is moving, it'll move diagonally. So the way they get X and Y is they move both motors in, in uh, some kind of unison with a whole pile of software. And uh, it really lightens the load on the, uh, on, on the moving parts. So really on a core XY, you're really only moving the extruder and that makes things a lot faster. So by contrast, this particular laser will top out at maybe 70 millimeters a second. The Core XY printer I have that I built myself specifically for speed will top out around 300 millimeters a second. So big difference, but uh, it's at, even at 300 millimeters a second, it's still gonna take a long time. So keep that in mind. Uh, anyway, those are 3D printers. You might want to consider having one in your shop because the, when you need one, it's crucial, but you don't necessarily need it often depending on your business. So depending on the kind of maker business you're in, you may also want to make a lot of signs. I certainly do. And that may mean that in addition to a laser for engraving and a CNC for, for uh, uh, you know, a different kind of engraving, I guess, basically, uh, you might also want a vinyl cutter, and I have a Cricut 3. Uh, it actually sits over in my office. It's not in my workshop, but, uh, but I use one of those on a regular basis. It works really well. Relatively cheap. You can certainly even buy cheaper ones than the Cricut 3, uh, and it's something you might want to consider. Now, about this point in the video, you're probably looking at all of the space that, the, that a laser or two lasers are gonna require, plus a, a 3D printer, plus a Cricut, and you're gonna say, I don't really have enough space for any of that. So, uh, 
What you could also consider is if you're going to have a laser and a vinyl cutter of some sort or, or a material cutter, uh, you might want to look at something like the X-Tool M1. I did a video a while ago and you can see it up in the corner here. But the M1 is, a, is in a, a nice package, it includes a cutter as well as a laser engraver. And uh, it's really something you might want to consider if space is tight. All right, so that's most of the quote unquote tech tools that I have in my shop. Now I also have a standard bunch of woodworking tools. I have a table saw, I have a jointer, I have a thickness planer and a drum sander, which I use on a regular basis. They're really helpful for CNC work because you need to prep the material. Uh, and also a bunch of uh, hand tools, mostly power tools because I'm lazy, but uh, you're also, if you're working with wood, you're gonna want a palm sander, potentially uh, a hand planer, uh, you know, the usual kind of tools. So, uh, you know, get those as you need them. Now, my general recommendation for for tools is spend your money on the tools that produce finished surfaces. And what I mean by that is uh, a table saw will generally carve out a piece of wood and at some point you're gonna have to plane it or sand it or do something with it. So you don't have to spend a ton of money on a, on a table saw. My table saw is, is a basic uh, 10 inch contractor saw. It's not uh, you know one of those $4,000 table saws. I think I paid $500 for it and it does everything that that I need in in my shop it can cut uh, you know nice and straight which is the important thing so spend your money on on things like like planers like lasers like CNC things where the where the when the tool is done the, the surface is finished and you'll go a long way uh, if you if you take that approach all right so there's a little glimpse of some of the tools in my shop now I do have multiple uh, units of some of these. I have multiple diode lasers. I have multiple CO2 lasers. Uh, not a lot of value in showing you another diode laser. The X-Tool D1 Pro is a very common one. Uh, I also have uh, now in my shop an Acer V35, which is a 35 watt diode laser, and you'll see a video coming up on that very soon. Uh, but, uh, you know, this was the intent here wasn't to say pick this tool over that tool. It was to just give you an idea of some of the tools you might want if you're going into a full-scale kind of maker business and uh, hopefully you got a little more information uh, uh, than you had before. Uh, I did put a couple of links uh, up above here. You'll see a couple of videos. Go watch those uh, if you're interested in a little more detailed review. I also put a smattering of links up in the corner as I was walking by some of this hardware in the video. Uh, hopefully you, you took a break from this one to go look at some of those. And uh, you know, hopefully now you have a little bit more idea of what kind of tools you might want and maybe the, even the order you want to buy them in. So that we can wind down as always, uh, get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.